you'll never guess what Enoch sees next. Well, actually, you might do. Indeed, it is another mountain. In fact, one you might say is much less remarkable than the last one, given that this mountain doesn't have a giant throne carved into its face, nor is it set on fire. Instead, Enoch tells us that he is brought to the middle of the earth and beholds a blessed place in which there were trees. He tells us specifically, and there I saw a holy mountain, and underneath the mountain to the east there was a stream, and it flowed toward the south. Much like the previous chapters, little can actually be deduced from Enoch's fascination with mountains, other than that mountains were considered to be a spiritual place, the highest places on all the earth, and thus the closest places that man could ever be to God. He then sees even more mountains and tells us, And I saw toward the east another mountain higher than this, and between them a deep narrow ravine. In it also ran a stream underneath the mountain. But wait, he's not done, for there in Enoch's vicinity he sees even more mountains. He tells us, And to the west thereof there was another mountain, lower than the former and of small elevation and a ravine deep and dry between them, and another deep and dry ravine was at the extremities of the three mountains. You'll see here that he finally begins to ponder less on the mountains and seems more drawn to the ravines between them. There in this particular space, he notes that the ravines are deep and dry, which you might say doesn't inspire him with the usual sensations of wonder that he feels towards the mountains, or the blessed centre of the earth, where he had seen the trees. In fact, the adjectives deep and dry paint the landscape as lifeless, bleak, or barren. But then he does continue that, and all the ravines were deep and narrow, being formed of hard rock, and trees were not planted upon them, and I marvelled at the rocks, and I marvelled at the ravine, ye, I marvelled very much. So once more, despite the unremarkable sight of these deep and dry ravines, he still marvels at them, perhaps taking nothing of what he sees for granted anymore. Perhaps having seen such hellish and desolate places, the sight of a mundane set of ravines fills him with relief, and maybe some much needed normalcy. In the subsequent chapter, this area is described as a valley, but we cannot know for sure where on earth it actually is. Some scholars suggest that this valley was indeed Jerusalem, or more specifically, the land outside of Jerusalem, and that Enoch had been brought here first, after his visits to the other unearthly planes of existence. In chapter 27, we see him turning to the archangel Uriel and asking him, For what object is this blessed land, which is entirely filled with trees and this accursed valley between. Accursed might have been a strong term, given that the text does not suggest there is anything cursed about the land. It is described once again as deep and dry, but there is nothing to suggest that it is anything other than a barren land. Perhaps in a time where fertile land was imperative to every man, this valley outside of Jerusalem may very well have been considered cursed given that nothing could grow on it. It might also be suggested that because this valley was devoid of plants and trees, it was also devoid of life, and because nothing lived there, it was a place that had been forsaken. Uriel supplies Enoch with a more direct answer, telling him, This accursed valley is for those who are cursed forever. Here shall all the accursed be gathered together, who utter with their lips against the Lord, unseemly words, and of his glory speak hard things. With this, we can understand that this area, presumably the area outside of what was once ancient Jerusalem, is where the accursed would flock to. Remember that at this time, many ancient civilizations around Israel still worshipped other deities, from the Canaanite gods to the Babylonian gods, to name a few. What Uriel may have been trying to show Enoch here is that everyone at the time who did not recognise Israel as the site of God's chosen people 
were ultimately doomed to gather in this valley. Naturally, these civilizations who did not believe in the biblical God were more likely to antagonize him, much as those who did believe in him would antagonize their gods. Ultimately, the biblical God and the ancient gods of Mesopotamia and surrounding regions could not coincide, and thus, lines were drawn in the sand. What Uriel seeks to show Enoch here is that those who had not joined ancient Israel and who had not recognized their God as the one true God would forever be cursed. He continues, Here shall they be gathered together, and here shall be their place of judgment. In the last days, there shall be upon them the spectacle of righteous judgment in the presence of the righteous forever. Here shall the merciful bless the Lord of glory, the eternal King. In the days of judgment over the former, they shall bless him for the mercy in accordance with which he has assigned them their lot. Once more, Uriel tells Enoch that in the final days, the valley outside of Jerusalem would also serve as the ground for which non-believers would be judged, and that upon them, righteous judgment would be delivered. Yet, Uriel does also speak of his God's mercy, and that those outside of Jerusalem will also come to bless him, and in effect, be shown some clemency. This also drives home the idea that God's chosen people aren't necessarily of a race or a place, but that the chosen or the elect can be from any place, so long as they recognize this God as their creator and Lord, and forsake the ways of their own lifestyles that aren't congruent with worship. This would include the worshipping of other deities, which around Canaan and the Egyptian domain would be significant. The chapter ends with Enoch blessing his god, which has become customary after learning something new from the angels, and he tells us, Then I blessed the Lord of glory, and set forth his glory, and lauded him gloriously. As always guys, if you've enjoyed today's episode on the book of Enoch, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe for more content just like this. If you'd like to support the channel, and help me to continue to make these types of videos, then you may wish to consider becoming a channel member. Just click the blue join button beneath the video. Until next time.